Uh, my name's Peggy Oki, and I am an artist and environmental artist and uh, among, I guess, a few other things. <laughs> uh, but anyways, I'm talking, oh, I'm talking about art and activism for citations today. Um, I, I, as I said, I'm a painter and artist and uh, looks like the format, I'm gonna have to, let me go back, sorry. So onward. I am a surfer and I used to be quite an avid skateboarder. So I've, sk I've painted uh, citations on my surfboards and also on a sk couple of skateboard decks. Those are actually more for fundraising purposes than skateboard decks. But ever since I had this experience, boy, it's probably at least 20 years ago uh, when I was paddling out to go surfing. Uh, I was about maybe this deep in water. I just got on my, I just got on my board and some dolphins started approaching. One of them swam directly underneath my board, turned sideways and looked it up at me and I went, well, okay, that's it. <laughs> so I felt that I needed to show them if they ever did that again, that I'm a big fan. <laughs> I actually call myself a sperm whale groupie and a cetacean nerd. <laughs> and uh, the thing that also inspires me as a surfer, having experiences, like, as I shared with the dolphins, and I have not been this lucky yet to be one of the surfers in the water when an orca comes around, but would anybody like to have that experience? Yeah. Wouldn't that be awesome? I was like, oh. And this is in New Zealand, Ingrid. This is at Whale Bay in Raglan. <laughs> so ages ago, I can't remember exactly when, it was a TV special with John Denver and Jacques Cousteau. And can you hear me okay? Okay, and Jacques Cousteau said, listen to the poets, the musicians and the artists. And I, and I really took that to heart. I went, wow, it's really an acknowledgement that uh, you can be an artist and have some kind of a voice. Uh, yeah. So in 2004, I started the Origami Whales Project to raise awareness about commercial whaling activities of Japan, Norway, and Iceland. And ultimately, it grew from a curtain of 1,400 to 2,285. And then in 2007, with the help of lots of schools and youth groups and volunteers that participated, we hand-stitched this curtain that I brought to Anchorage, Alaska, and it represented, and it was during the International Whaling Commission meetings, and this was at a special reception at the Performing Arts Center near the, where the meetings were being held. Uh, this curtain represented the number of whales reported killed by these, these three whaling nations since the 1986 whaling moratorium. Does anybody have any idea how many whales are in this curtain? This isn't, this isn't even the whole curtain. <laughs> I, I just thought, okay, I'll just do, put a couple of pics in. Any, I can't see any hands. Okay, no, okay. Um, well, that number at that time was 28,000. 28,000 whales had been reported killed since the, they were supposed to stop killing whales. Uh, and since then, the curtain is over 40,000. I was so busy with things like the Origami Whales Project and finishing my environmental uh, art studies and things at College of Creative Studies, UCSB, that, and I finally, had time, even though I was aware of Tokite for many years before, I finally said, I'm doing something. I'm just going to do it now. And in 2013, I came up with this idea, <laughs> environmental art, I guess you could say, to get people to submit a one minute clip of them with their, uh, you know, recording of reading their wish to Santa Claus to have Tokite be freed and then send it to me and then I had friends helping and we edited all this, this, these bits together and we actually had some uh, video with Howard Garrett in it, our friend Howard. And uh, the video is uh, on YouTube and you can see, if you just do a search Christmas for Lolita, a video petition for freedom, uh, you can find it on YouTube and I hope you'll enjoy it because it's really quite quite a fun video and wait for the very end too. Um, and then the following year in 24, early 2014, I went to the Miracle March for Lolita in Florida. And then I also launched my, my uh, campaign Valentine's for Lolita. 
and uh, you can see that Howard was there and he filled out one of the form Valentines, but people were also welcome to, to send in regular Valentines. They were an, uh, addressed to Mr. Fernando Iroa, who was, had just, you know, through Palace Entertainment, they had just acquired the M Miami's Aquarium. And so we were playing nice. I said, okay, send Valentines. We, we sent over 200 to uh, the new owners. Uh, I never heard back from Fernando Iroa. He didn't even say thank you for the Valentines or anything. So I was starting to get kind of impatient. And after about a year and a half from, uh, you know, from sending that, the time of sending the Valentines, I decided, okay, let's, let's go a little deeper on this. And uh, so Palace Entertainment, Parkes Reunidos, is a multinational corporation that owned over 42 theme parks at that time. Four of them were captive cetacean facilities. The one on the top in that photo is, uh, sadly, Marineland Antibes. And we had a presentation yesterday talking about the orcas there and how uh, there's hopefully the activists will win the effort to prevent them from being shipped to China. Wouldn't it be incredible to have orca sanctuaries that can house all of, you know, like, like maybe a big one for all of them or... Just no more of this shipping to, to China business, please. Um, and, then, and then you can see in the bottom center, the Miami Seaquarium was one of their uh, portfolio items. So I decided that in 2015, that it was gonna be no more Mr. Nice Guy, and I was gonna have a letter campaign with, and you can see there's a, on the, in the bigger box, there's a, like a letter collector's packet is what I called it. And anybody who wanted to participate in collecting signatures could download this packet. And there was a sample letter, the image in the center, that poster-like thing in the center. It was pretty much anybody who saw that photo of Toki Tay in that tank would just say, where do I sign? They would hardly, they would ask sometimes, are you gonna just let her go in the ocean? And of course, I knew that wasn't gonna happen that way. So I included um, Howard uh, Orca Network's retirement plan so that people would know that she was gonna be looked after uh, upon her release. And then I also included a list of all the theme parks that were part of Parkus Reunidos Palace Entertainment uh, so that people would know which ones they were pledging to boycott in this letter. <laughs> so no more Mr. Nice Guy. And, um, and then uh, we did some tweet storms to promote the campaign. And uh, dear Robin Camille, bless her, um, she's not with us any longer, but she, was a, a, she had an incredible voice, and she sang this uh, song for Tokite, and she contacted me and said, how can I help you? I go, let's post your song some more. <laughs> So it was, it was quite an effort. A lot of people participated. They downloaded the packets, collected signatures. Up there on the top center, does anybody recognize that person in the top center? You can just call out her name if you know who she is. She, um, I think she still is, I'm not 100% sure, uh, Mandy Wagner was a volunteer for uh, Orca Network. And so she participated and collected lots of letters. I got friends together to go to events and collect signatures. Uh, Leslie uh, and her, her wonderful daughter, they collected all those letters. Uh, and then this woman on the, on the far end there was in Ireland, and she went to some prison and gave a presentation. It's like, they know, they know what it's like. So she sent letters and so, you know, it was, these are just, this is a partial representation of the people and, and how many letters they collected and sent. And wherever I went, of course, I'd have these letters with me and I'd get people to sign them. And, uh, and then on the, the uh, let's see, that'd be your right. There's a photo of myself with a couple of friends. And we, we, there were about maybe five, four times that many people. We were at a protest at the Mirage Hotel in Vegas, protesting and raising awareness for the dolphins and for Tokite. Uh, just, it's a passion. <laughs> so August 9th, 2017, which was the day before the 47 year anniversary of Tokite's capture, that date, August 10th, 1970, has been, you know, like kind of etched in my brain. Uh, we delivered over 6,500 letters for Tokite to the corporate office in Newport Beach um, of Palace Entertainment. And I was so grateful for the support of my friend, 
the the rock star looking guy with the sun shades on that's uh, that's Matt Sorum, former drummer of Guns N' Roses. A uh, beautiful human. I just really appreciate Matt. And I, I contacted him and said, hey, Matt, would you be interested? And he came out for the protest. And he really supported me in going up and delivering the letters because when we first arrived after our little demonstration on the corner a few blocks away and we marched over to Palace, there were two security guards waiting for us, not allowing us into the building. And this big guy here, he was like, Rrr, you know. Uh, luckily, uh, Matt had a way of convincing him to take the letters, and he, he swore on God's name that he would deliver these letters to the office. So besides, you know, all these different things going on, there were the hurricanes. Later, after that protest event, there was Hurricane Irma approaching. And, you know, anytime we see that there's a hurricane heading from Miami or Florida, it's, you know, people who are watching Tokite's story, we're just, you know, sweating bullets. We're like, oh my God, please, please, please. And just watching every, you know, six hours or whatever, the movement of a, of a hurricane as it's building. And luckily, Irma did not uh, destroy or, or cause injury to Tokite's. Um, body uh, and uh, actually Lincoln, don't tell anybody, <laughs> Lincoln, I won't say his last name, uh, had, got his drone and because we weren't sure what, you know, we weren't sure about the condition of this aquarium or anything. He managed to sneak somewhere and launch a drone and get this aerial to, to prove that she's alive. So we were all relieved after a few days of the whole hurricane uh, passing, but you could see the water was pretty stirred up. And then of course, uh, Hurricane Dorian came, you know, was heading for Miami. Since then, there was, um, you know, uh, Maria, and so, you know, there. I've been worried about her <laughs> for a long time, and I. Uh, this is just one of the memes, and I just really appreciated this statement uh, by, by Albert Einstein. Uh, our task, our task must be to free ourselves by widening our circle of compassion, to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature and its beauty, Albert Einstein. And then another inspiration for me, great inspiration is Martin Luther King Jr. He, he really like just keeps me going whenever I'm like, oh, you know, I look for one of his quotes that I have. One day the absurdity of the almost universal human belief in the slavery of other animals will be palpable. We shall then have discovered our souls and become worthier of sharing this planet with them. I say actually more them sharing the planet with us. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, I just wanted to share that. Um, so ongoing, uh, ongoing efforts for Tokite. Uh, it was at least from 2020, I think even before, I started to have a few uh, visualization events on social media for Tokite where, where I would have uh, somebody who had shamanic skills do a, a you know, ceremony, and then we would go into visualization of Tokite being free. And if, was any, how many people here last year? Can I get a show of hands? I can't see. Oh, darn. Okay, well, last year I did a the whole visualization reading of Tokite's freedom. It's recorded on YouTube. I'm sorry? Yeah, 2018, I'm sorry, yeah, 2018 when I was here, the last Superpod. So, yeah, okay, so there were some people here, yay, okay, so you were part of the, you're part of the visualization. I still think that the visualization of her return home and her health is really important uh, and very helpful, as you, as you will get an update this afternoon, but, but there's some just exciting, wonderful news for her, um, some, some that, people may not have even envisioned, but it's happening and, and it's so wonderful. Um, I wanted to share that in February last year, I uh, you know, did, had already done the letter campaign, uh, said, okay, what else can I do? Okay, online petition. I generally prefer real hard copy letters and things, but we did a petition campaign. We got to about 15,000 uh, e-signatures and I was doing this with the help of Women of the World versus Taiji. Uh, they were really wonderful, much more technically skilled than me about handling different things. And then February 2022, uh, Tokite, a whistleblower within the Sequarium, 
had told PETA that she was deathly sick, that she may have had pneumonia. And so it was like, oh my gosh, the hurricanes, pneumonia. So I said, okay, what else can I do? Okay, another art litter campaign. And, <laughs> and uh, so we started in, in March. I, I contacted Christina Mulley. I think some people probably know her. She uh, helped me with this campaign as far as I was in Costa Rica working remotely and she was in, in Washington state here and she received letters and helped me with sending letters in. We sent in uh, six different letters and because this was with the uncertainty of what uh, Eduardo Albor, the new CEO, the CEO of the new ownership, the Dolphin Company, what was he gonna do? Is he gonna let her go? There was, it was really ambiguous. So I said, okay, art letters campaign. And in March, I sent, we sent 560 letters and then it went up to 373 letters, 393 letters. So we sent roughly 400 at a time. And then um, in May, uh, there were 90 letters. And then in, by June 19th, over 2,370 art letters for Lolita were sent. And by art letters, <laughs> thanks. It, and this is thanks to so many people. Uh, you know, everybody who participated, people who helped, including uh, you know, like uh, Michelle Morrow, Madison O'Connell, the names. So I'm going to play this video, and then you'll be able to get to see the names of the people involved. Is that too loud? Is that okay. Okay. Uh, how, how, let me turn. The, well, my volume's pretty low. Oh, whew. okay. Oh, what? What's going on here? Okay. Now, oh, you know what? I'm. Uh, oh, it's going to another speaker. I have mine at low. Let me let me try again. Okay. Let's try again. Okay. Now you can't hear it, huh? <laughs> okay, let's go back. Uh, huh, what happened? Okay, so I'm going to turn the Okay, so I'm going to go back to Ep Epson PJ will not let me control the volume, so I need to go back to this one. Almost there. Okay, I'm gonna try this again. How's it? Yeah. Yeah, it's only music. Okay, we'll go, okay. All right, let me go back. Okay. Okay, there's a beautiful soundtrack that goes with this. Uh, th this is on, it's like a virtual art exhibit, uh, wanting to thank people because they're all over the world. I couldn't just have it in one gallery in one part of the world. So I just made a virtual exhibit. And please uh, see the names. I'm acknowledging some of the many. Can, can you hear it any better? Okay.
All right, so. <laughs> yeah, and you know, applause to everybody who's done over all these years, all these decades to bring her home. Um, it's, a little, it's been a lot of work. <laughs> but, uh, so some fantastic things started happening um, soon after the art letters. Uh, there was a letter from two representatives, uh, uh, Elvira Salazar uh, of Flo in Florida and Suzanne Del Beni of Washington State. They wrote a letter to the USDA and said, we want to know what's happening because you went in and you said that she can't be shown and yada, da. We want to know her, you know, her health conditions and Lee's also. Uh, you know, that was an action that we said, okay, send messages to the USDA in support of that letter from, from uh, Salazar and Delvini. And then soon after that, literally, I think it was within a week or something, this, the uh, announcement uh, from a representative Schiff came out of, about proposing the SWIMS Act. And that one, uh, we, you know, like I, I said, okay, we got to jump on that. We got to get people to write the representatives to co-sponsor the SWIMS Act. And the SWIMS Act is legislation that, uh, if passed in the United States, it would ban the uh, trans transferring of and breeding of four uh, cetaceans, the beluga whales, pilot whales, false killer whales, and orcas. So that was like, we, this is going to kill SeaWorld. <laughs> they would not be able to breed them anymore. They would not be able to, to move them around and trade them off for all that stuff like they've been doing. So, uh, you know, we've, we've got a, an action page for that. Uh, I've been trying to follow the status of it. And I also approached my representative, U.S. representative in um, Santa Barbara County, uh, Unfortunately, things got mixed, mixed up with my keynote, so I can't show you the, the photo, but I met with my uh, representative and presented this letter that I was going to actually send, but he was at this uh, meeting that he was holding. So I said, all right, perfect opportunity. And I asked him to co-sponsor the SWIMS Act, and later on I checked, and since then there's been 42 representatives signed on to co-sponsor the SWIMS Act. Uh, and uh, he's one of them. So... Taking action, writing letters, talking to your legislators makes a difference. And it's so incredible that these legislators, including Jared Huffman, uh, Delbeni, and 
just a, there's a list, uh, got behind the SWIMS Act, uh, the current status of it, to the best of my knowledge, and, and maybe if uh, Naomi has any corrections for me, please do, it's, it kind of got put kind of back on hold, but it will be apparently reintroduced, hopefully by the end of this year, and when, when that happens, we will be posting this action again for people to, again, contact their legislators if they have not yet signed on to co-sponsor. So let's get that done. Um, and uh, so what happened at Superpod 8? Well, oh, Superpod, I meant Superpod 6, the one in 20, uh, <laughs> 2018 when I was last here. Uh, so what happened there, we went whale watching a couple of times. We went to the lime kiln gathering, but before that I went on with, uh, with Mandy actually and some of her friends on uh, um, one of the uh, Maya's Legacy Whale Watch trips, and we got to see J-Pod, and we saw Mike. Okay, who can tell me M uh, Mike's number? J26. J26? All right, thank you for letting me know, because I was like, what was his number? But he was so amazing, because we were watching, and they're like, oh, there's Scarlet, oh, there's the, you know, so and so, and there's Mike, and he's and then Mike started coming towards the boat. I was like, oh, but then I think the wind was coming or something. So the captain said it was time that we get up, get out of there. I'm like, I wanted Mike to come up to the boat and say hi, but what a fin he has, huh? He's like an impressive, impressive male there. Um, so we saw that, and I and I was and I was going, Scarlet. Why is everyone so excited to see Scarlet? And so Scarlet was this calf, and. I found out literally, so then within two weeks of being at Superpod, Tahlequah gave birth and lost her calf. And I think everybody here knows about that. And um, I was primarily working for Toki Taste to return home, but how could I possibly help to get her home only to starve, you know, with, with the Southern resident orcas, which she is a part of? So I said, I, I got to do more. And so, you know, then we lost Scarlett. And, and that was quite a roller coaster for people who were following that story of sightings of her, um, you know, NOAA and, you know, National Marine Fisheries is trying to feed her or, you know, in, you know veterinarians are trying to in, shoot darts of medication in her and stuff. And she, she passed away. She disappeared. So, um, you know, since then, I've been more involved in this whole challenge, uh, which is, a challenge, but it can become a victory, and we're going to breach these dams. And so, so we, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I, I'll, I'll say I'm not like super involved in it. I, I see people like Dam Sense and and other uh, groups posting about what actions can be taken. I'm on some lots of email lists and stuff, and there was a big action that had a deadline for July 3rd. But there was also the three sessions of the Biden administration listening, and I didn't get to speak. I was I kept getting waitlisted, so it, it helped me anyways because I got to write out a maximum of a thousand words. <laughs> and in my thousand words, I included that uh, since the since literally that time that I was at Superpod in 2018, there were at least eight southern killer whale deaths. And then I, I gave them the names and said, yeah, they're real individuals that, that have starved to death. And then um, another thing that happened was that K-44 Ripple uh, basically disappeared. And there was an orca found entangled in fishing gear off of the coast of Oregon. And it, you know, some people were, were, oh, was that him? The body was too decomposed to, to ID him. But it turned out ultimately at least uh, I, this was the latest I could find from Wild Orca, was that they, they don't know really what happened to K-44. But uh, the other orca that was dead was probably a transient, and it died of very likely of entanglement. And I don't know how many people know, because it's not as big of a conversation. I raised it last time, too, at Superpod, that bycatch and entanglement in fishing gear, so bycatch as in actively being caught in a net, but not intentionally because these giant nets get dragged behind the fishing boat and like everything gets get caught. In. So then there's entanglement, which is, uh, you know, gear that got tossed, damaged, tossed away, got away somehow. And we know, all know the stories of like humpback whales and stuff being rescued. These are the staggering numbers that I gathered before I went to Washington DC last year and worked with the Smithsonian 
during their Folk Life Festival, and I proposed this idea of raising awareness about entanglement. The goal was to get um, like 2,500 origami whales and dolphins, and then, you know, to, to, to just as an example, oh no, 3,000, and then say that a hundred times that many of all these origami whales uh, and dolphins die every year. And so I decided to make a mosaic of a humpback whale. And then in the other photo, there's a vaquita porpoise. As we know, there's only roughly maybe 10, possibly 10 left. And then that other dolphin behind me is a Maui dolphin from New Zealand. And I've been campaigning for them for about 15 years. So when I went back to New Zealand uh, earlier this year, I proposed this, this special installation to raise awareness about the Maui. And uh, the goal was to get a thousand origami uh, Maui dolphins. And then I created a, mo a mosaic again. And then we did an installation in the library with fishing gear. And uh, you can see you can see what I'm doing with uh, this entanglement uh, on, my, on our website. And then uh, most recently, what's been keeping me busy is Icelandic whaling. Uh, this is the most opportune time I've ever seen in campaigning uh, on the whaling issue to end Icelandic whaling. So I said, okay, I'm gonna do something about it. <laughs> so uh, we have a campaign, folding origami fin whales. I don't know if you saw it out on the table in the, in the lobby, but you're welcome to fold one or at least have the pre-folded origami fin whales to write a message on to Icelandic decision makers and to Minister Svandis Vavarsdottir. I'm so proud that I can say it now because <laughs> she's the minister that for now, temporarily suspended the uh, whaling permit to kill 151 endangered fin whales, second largest whale on the planet. They grow up to like 80 feet. Uh, so please check that out and write your message if you in, in the lobby. What inspires most, what inspires me most is Tokite. After all these years, like over 52 years, her, her will to live, her grace, she just, yeah, so it just keeps me going. And then people who get involved, like this, this artist, Stephen Alford, um, he's on Instagram, The Ones in Future Force. This is his illustration. And when I saw that, I just so resonated with that. Um, and it takes a village to bring an orca home. It's not just the artist going, oh, let's do environmental art. It's not um, another person or another person. It's, it's everybody coming together and doing what they, whatever they're good at, whatever they can do. And it, it, it can be just going out there and talking to friends and collecting letters, going to your child's school and saying, hey, can we do this letter writing campaign? So there's a lot of things that, that everyone can do. And I wanted to say that raising awareness bring it and it brings good news and hope uh i spoke last time about the circuses this l list is quite long now it's grown since i spoke five years ago as far as the the banning of of animals used in circuses and we know that um, s these captive cetacean facilities are more like a circus than a zoo uh, so uh i wanted to share a little bit from roger payne dr roger payne we also lost him uh, a little over a month ago, uh, and he was basically one of the key drivers of the sale, Save the Whales movement early on in, in the 70s by playing recordings of whale song so that people go, wow, whales sing? Oh, maybe we should save them. And he's just been very dedicated. Uh, and uh, there's a, a quote from this, this piece that he wrote literally a week before he passed. And of course, I want to honor Ken Balcom, David Kirby, Elizabeth Batt. And, and I want to be grateful for everything that inspires me, um, including the Southern Resident Orcas, because they have been, they just continue, don't they? And, but they still need us, of course. Uh, in the raising awareness side of things, I strongly urge people to watch two, like a few documentaries, but these, if I had to pick two, would be Eating Our Way to Extinction yes. and Seaspiracy. So I, I really just like, yeah, you, people, please watch those documentaries. Activation. We are activists, and, and there's volunteers that are activists. There's researchers and interns. 
citizen scientists, writers, filmmakers, ac academics, artists, musicians, computer nerds, which I need help from, <laughs> web and graphic designers, bookkeepers, electricians, because I can use help from electricians once in a while at my place, and volunteers, volunteers, volunteers. Volunteers just help so much. They make the world go round. Uh, hold, and please hold vision towards manifestation for Tokite, Corky, Morgan, Shamank, all the captives to get to a sea sanctuary uh, at least. And this is our, uh, one of our, this is a shot of our action page. And you can see on the bottom over there, it says SWIMS Act. Uh, so it's, 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 there's information on it right now, but we're not calling for action at this time. But, but, but if you want to follow us or, uh, you know, we will be posting a reminder towards the end of the year whenever we know that the SWIMS Act will be up again. Uh, so I got to say, I got to admit, whenever I tell people I'm going to Superpod, they're going, what's that? And they go, I go, well, very fondly, I call Superpod the Orca Nerd Conference. <laughs> I really mean that with fondness in my heart and just delight to see everybody because, you know, we all love orcas and cetaceans. And so that's why we're here and we're learning so much and it's wonderful. And I want to thank Jeff and everybody involved in bringing us, you know, together for this. Um, yeah, it's such a wonderful thing. And then uh, Swims Act and then breach and thrive, breaching the dams and let the Southern resident orcas thrive. Do whatever we can. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, let's remember to make those phone calls, those phone calls, send postcards. Um, we've got that information also on the action page. Uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram, there I am. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. We're probably out of time. No, no time for questions.